hello uh, and welcome to online worship uh, through Conway First United Methodist Church. Uh, I am Pastor Michael uh, and together with Pastor Michelle, uh, we want to say that we are glad you are here. Uh, if you are a guest, then we want to give you a special welcome uh, and invite you to sign in on our virtual attendance pad uh, or email us at welcome uh, at Conway FUMC with any questions uh, or interest uh, that you might have. With the help of so many who will be singing uh, and leading us in prayer and reading scripture, uh, this promises to be a great day uh, of worship. Welcome. As we worship together, let us join together in prayer. Lord God, you call us all by name and come to us with mercy, forgiveness, and steadfast love. We thank you for bringing us together for worship and pray that your blessings will lead us forward to be a blessing in the world. Guide us to be instruments of your healing, your peace, your love. Be with all who are ill this day. Be with all who are grieving. Be with all who need your guidance and grace. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. And now bind us together with one heart as we pray the prayer of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Testament scripture reading for today comes from Exodus chapter 34, verses 4 through 6. So Moses chiseled out two tablets of stone like the first ones. Early in the morning he climbed Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and he carried the two stone tablets in his hands. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and stood there with him, and he called out his own name, Yahweh. The Lord passed in front of Moses, calling out, Yahweh, the Lord, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Our New Testament reading comes from John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who have ever who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you, that you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Father, I want these whom you have given me to be with me where I am. Then they can see all the glory you gave me because you loved me even before the world began. O oh, righteous Father, the world doesn't know you, but I do, and these disciples know you sent me. I have revealed you to them, and I will continue to do so. Then your love for me will be in them, and I will be in them. So this week, uh, we will continue our interview uh, with Pastor Michelle uh, to get to know her better, uh, but then also for us to share the good news uh, of a God who knows us uh, by name. Uh, today, our focus is going to be on names. Uh, and I'll start by calling attention to our tradition uh, of calling us Pastor Michael and, and Pastor Michelle. Uh, this is how we will formally uh, introduce one another and recognize one another. Uh, now, I will say that for adults especially, uh, there are many times when it is perfectly okay to call us by our first names, uh, Michael, Michelle. Uh, we want to have that kind of personal uh, relationship with you. Uh, and yet, at the same time, we want to name uh, that we are pastors. Uh, we are your pastors. Uh, and when you need us in that role, uh, we definitely want to be here uh, for you in that way. And I love that tradition here. I'm very mm -hmm. comfortable with that, that way of addressing us. I am also very excited. This is, this is a kind of unique moment <laughs> uh, as far as appointments go. I have um, sometimes, you know, it's always a struggle for people to remember folks' names uh, whenever they're getting to know people. Mm -hmm. And my mom likes to say that I have one of those faces that seems very familiar to people. So I get called a lot of different <laughs> names um, periodically. But in this case, we have the same name, basically, uh -huh. the, the masculine and the feminine versions uh -huh. of it, right? So my hope is that uh, it'll be easier for people to remember Michelle and Michael, right? Uh -huh. um, and I also uh, love reflecting on what our names mean. Mm -hmm. um, when I was little, I, I looked up what my name meant, and mm -hmm. the, the resource that I had said that, that my, name, my name meant, who is like the Lord? And boy, I thought I was special, <laughs> right? Ooh, who is like the Lord? That's me, right? Um, and then I went to seminary and studied Hebrew and found out that our name is, in fact, a Hebrew name. Mm -hmm. um, and it is made up of the words Mikael, which means who is like the Lord, except it is not a statement, but a question. <laughs> uh, and that's when I realized, oh, who is mm -hmm. like the Lord? Nobody. Get over yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. It was a really good check <laughs> on my ego mm -hmm. there. <laughs> uh, that is uh, humbling to note. <laughs> Uh, and, and it reminds me of a time when I was sensing a call to ministry. I was in high school, uh, and I was in a worship service in a United Methodist Church uh, with a pastor who was really struggling, uh, and, and, and that was a nice way to put it. Uh, and I started to think, uh, oh, I could do better than that. Uh, I could be a pastor. Uh, and almost immediately, I sensed God uh, saying to me, really? Uh, you think you're so hot? Uh, you think you can do better? Uh, uh, I really heard God say, watch out. Uh, yes, I want you to do this. 
but you cannot do this uh, without me. Uh, so I heard, that's what I really heard God say, and that has stuck with me. Um, so I like this notion that our names uh, call us to trust in God uh, and not to think that we are like the Lord, um, uh, except when the Lord is shining uh, through us. Right, right. And, and, you know, I think it's not just... For us, that, that, that having this understanding of the meaning of the name is important, but it's it's all throughout the, the scriptures, right? Yeah. All throughout the scriptures, we are told how people are named and, and what that name means mm-hmm. and how it maps their story onto their name, including sometimes when people change names, right? <laughs> like Naomi changes her own name in, mm-hmm. in the story of Ruth when, when it's just, she's living such a hard life. She says, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara for I am bitter uh, mm-hmm. because the, the word Mara means bitter. So she mm-hmm. has renamed herself like that. But then so often God calls on people and names them, right? Mm-hmm. And the, we heard about Abram last week mm-hmm. and we know that he gets renamed and he gets renamed by God. God tells him, you were Abram, which which meant exalted ancestor, uh, but you will now be called Abraham, which means uh, ancestor of the multitude. And it's right in that moment when God gives Abraham over the promise, right? Mm. Um, so we get to we get to share our stories and our names as well. And and I have a story of my son's name. Uh, so my husband and I are both very strong-willed people, and when we are together, that's great. And when we're not, it's quite a battle. Um, and we did not agree on what we were going to name our son. Uh, I wanted a biblical name. I wanted mm-hmm. something like. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. <laughs> Imagine that, a New Testament scholar choosing yeah. that, right? Uh, but um, my husband, who has collected comic books since he was 14 years old, wanted to name our son Thor. Now, I <laughs> looked at myself, and I took a look at my husband, who's not that much taller than me, and sometimes has weighed less than me in our, our marriage, and I said, we are not producing a Thor. That's just mean to do to a child, right? Uh, so we had to go to a baby book. And we would take turns every night reading names out, and names that we both liked, we would make a note of on a list. And mm-hmm. my husband was reading the night that we came to Soren, which is my son's name. And uh, I liked it, my husband liked it, it made the list. Well, as we started narrowing down the list, um, I wanted to know what Soren meant. It's important mm-hmm. to me to know those things. And so I asked my husband, I said, do you remember what Soren meant? And he goes, oh, I didn't even pay any attention. So we looked it up, and it's the Danish name for Thor. <laughs> so Gosh. it turns out my husband won that argument after all. Uh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I remember those days looking through baby books and definitions and meanings, because that was important to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and won't get into that right now, because I, I couldn't stop. I'd have to go on for many, many. Um, but do want to, to turn back to God's name for a moment. Uh, in the Exodus passage uh, that we read, uh, Moses wants to know God's name. And God gives, uh, gives a name. Uh, and, and it's a bit awkward to read because it is the Lord who proclaims the name, which is the Lord. Uh, and then the name is defined. We read, the Lord, the Lord. And it is repeated repeated twice for emphasis, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Uh, This name, this phrase uh, is repeated so often in scripture. Uh, So I do invite you when you are um, calling upon the name of the Lord uh, to remember that this is who you are calling upon, uh, a God who is a merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding uh, in steadfast love. Uh, that is God's name. Right, and and we're given the meaning mm-hmm. when we're given the name as well, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing that I love about God's name, so uh, it's a name that's not typically pronounced in the Jewish tradition, right? Mm-hmm. That they recognize that to call on God's name is to is to call on a power that's beyond their control and comprehension um, that they need to be humbled to before um, they have great reverence and respect for the name of God so much so that they don't speak it mm-hmm. um, we have uh, 
actually, from time to time, taken liberties to go ahead and guess at how that name might be pronounced, and we typically say Yahweh is probably what we would say uh, that name is, how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I love about that is, is not only is that name tied to the Hebrew word that means being, Mm-hmm. which just means that God encompass, encompasses all of creation, all of everything, mm-hmm. is all of life is found rooted in God. Uh, but also, the reason that we think that that name might be pronounced that way is that actually it's the sound we make when we breathe, mm-hmm. right? We would say, Yahweh, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which means that when the psalm says, with every breath, praise the Lord. We kind of do. Hmm. With every breath that we take, we speak and call on the name of God, hmm. whether we're aware of it or not. And and that, for me, is an incredibly powerful uh, thing to realize. Mm-hmm. With every breath, that, yeah. is, that, that is power, powerful. Um, in our world with names, uh, there's a sense in which names do have power. Um, if you're walking down the hall and I call your name, you're likely to turn around because I know your name. I can I can make you turn around in in that way uh, because we have a connection uh, by virtue of our names. Uh, and yet, with God's name, uh, there is this built-in mystery. Uh, within God's name is this notion that we can't control God. We we don't have that kind of power over God. Uh, we can praise God, we can worship God, we can submit to God, uh, we can call upon God, uh, but always with this posture of humility, this posture of, of giving ourselves to something bigger than ourselves, uh, of opening our hearts uh, to be transformed in some way. Uh, so all of that is built into uh, God's name. All right. So there is that distance, but then Jesus comes and walks among us and and makes God's name real mm-hmm. and personal and incarnates, mm-hmm. right? Walks among us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've, we've heard a passage from the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John itself opens up with this announcement that that's what's happened, right? It says, the Word has become flesh and tented or tabernacled mm-hmm. among you. It's come to dwell and live among you um, and, and to be that presence in our lives and to, to be personal and, and takes on this very Jewish name of Yeshua, which means God, God with you, mm-hmm. right? Um, God's presence is among us. The, but then we get all the way to this point in Jesus' story. This is right before he's going to be arrested and he's doing a prayer on behalf of his, um, his followers, his people, mm-hmm. his friends. Uh, who know his name, hmm. and he announces, I, as he prays to God, I have made your name known to them. Hmm. I have built a relationship with these people. I have made you personal hmm. and given them a way to call on you. Hmm. Um, and then in that, in building that relationship with God, Jesus also wishes for us to be in relationship with one another, to build a community that knows one another, to build a community that's in union with one another, that that has a unity to each other. And that's the other piece of what he's praying for in this moment. He's calling us into relationship, which is um, which one of the things that's required to be in relationship is to know someone's name, right? Mm-hmm. If you don't know someone's name, you don't <laughs> even know that you can see them. You, they, they just pass through your mm-hmm. life. It reminds me of a story that Eugene Peterson shared. He He had always known there were birds in the world, like we all do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he decided at one point in his life to take up bird watching. Mm-hmm. And one of the things about taking up bird watching is that you look up the names of the birds. And he said mm-hmm. once he had looked up the names of the birds, he could see them. And he had never been able to see them before. Um, and it's the same for us. If we don't know one another's names, we miss seeing each other. I am certain that I have passed some of you in Walmart. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm certain that we have crossed paths on the streets of Conway at some point or another, but I haven't known your name, and you haven't known mine. And mm-hmm. so we pass through one another's lives. It's when we have each other's names that, that it becomes personal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. That's good. 
And I do, do love that notion of Jesus making God's name personal in that way as well. Uh, there is this real sense then that we really can make God turn around or make God come to us uh, because in Jesus we learn uh, that God wants to. God wants to turn around. God wants to be in relationship with us in that way. Um, so many times in the scripture we do hear uh, of how God calls us uh, by name. Um, that's a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. And it's something that we all claim as people of faith. That God knows who we are. We claim it in our baptism, right? Mm -hmm. um, God knows who we are, wants a relationship with us, recognizes the stories that our names carry. Mm -hmm. And and seeks that kind of personal reality of being in relationship with you. Mm. Friends, um, I've got a lot of names to get to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am so excited to have that opportunity and I'm excited for the days that are ahead for us. I would invite you this week to reflect on your name, what it has meant to you, um, what stories that it carries, um, who it, it shapes you into being. And I would love it if you would share some of those stories in the comments. It will help me get to know you better, <laughs> um, but it will also help us all get to know each other better. It will help build that community that Jesus is calling us to because we will know each other's names and we will know each other's stories. I look forward to the story that we are writing, to the community that we are building, to the relationship that is starting in this space. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, thank you uh, for joining us for this uh, time of worship. I trust that you have been both blessed uh, and challenged. Uh, I also thank you for your stewardship. Uh, as an act of worship and thanksgiving, uh, we invite you to give in support of the ministry uh, that God has given us. Uh, you may do so by check, uh, by text, or through our website. Um, I also invite you to Sunday School uh, for an additional opportunity. Uh, you are invited to a Zoom class called Faith Links. Uh, for conversations about the times in which we live uh, in the context of faith. Uh, this class is led by Keisha, Keisha and Clay Bumpers, uh, and you can find information about that uh, in the bulletin uh, and e-witness. Uh, it starts at 10.05 uh, this morning. Also, our virtual WOW camp, which is our online vacation Bible school for this year, starts tomorrow and will continue throughout the week with great resources for children and families to experiment, create art, play games, and read Bible stories together. Camp boxes have been assembled and actually can be picked up today in a drive through parade this afternoon. And please see more information in the other mentioned written communications. And now uh, we do invite you to reflect upon God's presence uh, in your life uh, and to be inspired uh, by this next song. Oh, 
friends, it has been a wonderful morning getting to know so many of your names. And now we will call upon God to bless you with this benediction. The God who knows your name, who seeks a relationship with you, calls you to carry his name into the world. So go forth, my friends, carrying the name of Jesus to all who know his love. Amen. <laughs>